Have you ever looked at some motorsport images that look a little bit like this? Or like this? And wondered how they did them? Psst. Today, I'll show you how to cheat them. Now, I will show you how to cheat them in Photoshop. I will also explain how you would go about shooting them normally in camera if you wanted, but it is quite a bit tricky. These sorts of photographs of fast moving objects, okay, that's the key thing to them is that they are fast moving. You want to try and emphasize the fact that they're going very fast. Now, if we just took a picture at a really high shutter speed, it would wind up looking like this. Now you look at that picture, you get absolutely no sense as to how fast that car is moving. Hell, you don't even know if it is moving. It could have just been parked in the middle of the road. So what we need to do is use a slower shutter speed so that we're gonna get some blur, but we don't want the blur to be the car itself. We want it to be the background. Now, it's important to distinguish, we only get objects blurring if they move across the sensor, not if they move at all. So an object can move as fast as it likes, as long as it doesn't change position from where it is on the sensor itself. So if we have an object going past us, but we keep the camera moving relative to it, then that object isn't actually going to move on the sensor itself. It's gonna remain in exactly the same spot on the sensor and everything else is going to move with it. So we would use a slower shutter speed and we would pan the camera with the car. That's gonna mean that the car will remain sharp because it's not moving relative to the sensor itself and the background is going to blur. And the slower we make the shutter, the more background blur we are going to get. But don't just jump in thinking I'll use a five second shutter speed and get all the background blur in the world because it's not as simple as that. Slower shutter speed means more background blur, but it also means it's more time that you have to spend keeping the camera perfectly still relative to the subject that you're trying to photograph. Add to the fact that when you are using longer and longer focal lengths, you're not only magnifying the subject, but you're also magnifying any movement that you input into the camera. And add to the fact that generally with motorsport, you have to use longer focal lengths because the subjects are quite far away from you. Then suddenly trying to do a third of a second with two, 300 millimeter focal length becomes really, really difficult. Now there's no hard and fast rule as to how slow a shutter speed you use. Ultimately, the shutter speed depends on two things. One, how much background blur you want to get, and two, how fast your subject is moving. Because to keep the subject sharp in the shot, yes, you have to keep the camera fixed relative to them, but how fast they are going is going to determine how far they've traveled in a particular space of time. So if I take a picture of somebody running past me, okay, they're not moving really all that fast in the grand scheme of things. It's probably gonna take them a good half a second to get from one side of my frame to the other. But if I'm taking a picture of a Formula One car going past at 200 mile an hour, it's gonna take them all of a split second to cover one side of the frame to the other. So the slower that a subject is moving, the longer it's gonna take them to cover that same sort of distance. So the longer that you'd have to keep your shutter open for to get the same amount of background blur. So let's have a look at how you fake this in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and there's three images here that I wanna quickly show you. This first one was taken with a shutter speed of one over two and a half thousandth of a second. And as you can see, there's absolutely no movement in that image whatsoever. Everything appears completely static. This next image was taken with a slower shutter speed of one two hundredth of a second, so about a tenth of the speed. And as you can see, having that slightly slower shutter speed has started to add a little bit of movement into the scene. Now, this third image was taken with a shutter speed of 1 40th of a second, so a much slower shutter speed. And as you can see, there is a lot more blur going on here. But the problem with using such a slow shutter speed is that it becomes very difficult to get the subject completely sharp. I mean, this is one of about 20 images that I took in a burst of this car going past, and this is the only one that's come out sharp. And even then, if we zoom in, it's not completely sharp because you can see the writing along the roof isn't quite tack sharp, but it's close enough. 
So now I'm going to show you how to get something like this from this. But I'll be honest, spoiler alert, I'm not actually going to be able to get this much of a result from this image. Realistically, it's actually going to be this one that we focus. But let me demonstrate why. Firstly, I'll show you the principle of what we're going to do using this image. But then I'll show you as to why kind of trying to use such a high shutter speed and then adding so much blurring afterwards is really a bad idea. So the two tools that we're going to be using for this are up here under filter and blur. And they are these two here, motion blur and radial blur. So the first thing I'm going to do before we do anything else is I'm going to duplicate this layer and you'll see why in a minute. So with this top layer, what I'm going to do is go up to filter and add motion blur. Now, as you can see, as you drag this slider from left to right, it's going to make the, the whole image blur in whatever direction I can feel like. So I can make it blur this way if I want to. I can make it blur that way. But obviously, we want the car going side to side. So we're going to blur it this way. Now, how much blur do we add? Well, I could do that, but it's going to look a bit stupid. Let's go for... Let's go for somewhere around 100 for now, just to demonstrate this. So, there we are, that's motion blur. But we have a slight problem because it's blurred the car as well. And this is why I duplicated these two layers because now it gives us one image with a blurred out background and one image with a completely solid car. So what we can do is quickly rub out the blurred car from the top layer, revealing the sharp car from the layer below. And there you have it, except not quite. There's two big problems with it. See, the problem is when we blurred that top layer, it's blurred the car as well. And that's made the blurred car take up more of the frame than the non-blurred car. So we have to rub out beyond the outline of the non-blurred car in order to clear off all of the blurring. And thus you're gonna start to see some of the non-blurred background peeking through. You'd also see it in places like the window here as well. Second problem is the wheels. They're not moving. We have a background that's moving, but we have a car that currently looks like it's just sliding around everywhere. So to sort out these wheels, we need to use the radial blur, but we only want to blur the wheels, not the whole picture. So what we'll do is we'll come up to here and we'll pick up the lasso tool and we're just gonna go around the tire itself. You can get away with doing it with the tire because the whole tire is black so you're not really going to see too much of a, a kind of hard edge on a black surface so we just select the wheel there and then we come around to radial blur and it presents us with two options do we want spin or do we want zoom so for this one we want spin quality we'll put to best amount let's put it up to 30 let's see how that comes out and it adds a little bit of blur and then we do the same to the front wheel around there and there you have it so now we have an image that actually looks fairly similar to this one here but like i said we've got the, the added problems of these kind of rough edges which is why i wouldn't use a completely still image to try and create this sort of look you see a little bit of blur like this isn't actually all that difficult to do this is where the shots become difficult. So now let's put the same methodology into this image and create a look like this. And it's gonna be a little bit easier to do with this because we already have a blurred background. So it's not gonna look as obvious with the finished image. So the first thing we do is motion blur to the background. Let's go a bit crazy with this one to prove the point. So let's take it up to say 400 and we hit okay. And we get all that blurred car out there. And then we come in on the wheel and we lasso around there. Yep. And let's radial blur that. But let's go for more like, say, 60. Lots of blur. And we'll radial blur around the front one as well. Yep. And same again, radial blur. And look at that, not all that dissimilar, but a lot easier to photograph. Now, how do we also get this effect? 
Now this is a good effect because it allows you to draw the viewer's attention straight to one particular part of the photograph. Now obviously the panning still does the same thing in as much as the car is the only thing that you can see. But with racing cars and stuff, they're generally badged up with sponsorship. They've normally got the driver's name plastered on the side or something like that. So maybe you want to draw the viewer's eye to one particular sponsor off the entire car. Now the principle to this technique is very similar to that of panning in as much as we use a relatively slower shutter speed and we introduce movement into the camera. Anything that remains static in relation to the camera is going to appear sharp. Anything that moves in relation to the camera is gonna be blurred out. Except with this particular technique, rather than focus on moving side to side with the subject, we're gonna move in and out. So if you think about when you zoom in, okay, you go from seeing a lot of the frame and you cut into just one bit in the middle, okay, but the center of the frame doesn't actually change. So if you zoom out or zoom in whilst you are taking a picture, provided the center of the frame from when you start taking the picture stays exactly the same throughout the exposure, then that little bit of the picture is gonna remain exactly the same and that zooming in and out is gonna create a blurring effect all the way around it. Okay, if you just zoom out a couple of millimeters, it's only gonna create a little bit of blur. Whereas if you zoom from 105 to 24, it's gonna have a massive amount of blurring effect. But again, the problem with that is that you have to keep the subject exactly pin centered the entire time you do it. Otherwise, the subject's gonna blur out as well. But how do we replicate that effect using Photoshop. Okay, now for this effect, let's use the same image that we did before as an example. So the first thing we'll do for this is flatten these layers so it's a single image. There we go. And then for this, all we're gonna use is the radial blur again, but we're gonna change it from spin to zoom. And I'm also gonna change the quality just for now from best to draft. Because we're trying to blur the entire image, this does take quite a bit of time to process if you do it in best quality. Just for speed, I'm gonna do it in draft, and I would also recommend that you do it in draft to start with as well, and let me show you why. So let's take this down from the 60s to kind of 20s, just for now. So if I hit okay with this, there's the blur. But the problem is, it's kind of focusing into nothing. Because if we go back into the filter menu, you can see here, blur center. And this lets us kind of stipulate where in the image we want the, the blur to be. So let's say we wanna try and focus it on this garage sign at the back here. So I'm just gonna kind of ballpark it and say it's somewhere around about there, I think. This is another good reason why it's good to keep it in draft because it means you can quickly kind of hit okay. Is it in the right spot? No. Right, control Z to undo, go back and try it again. If you do it in best every time, it's gonna take forever. So do it in draft until you find the right spot and then you can do it in best later. So if we try this and hit okay, we're still, no, we're still not far enough back. We're landing somewhere here. So we'll control Z, undo that. This might take a while. There we go. So that gives you a rough idea, but that's adding quite a bit of blur, really kind of too much. What I would actually do personally is maybe rather than kind of 28, I'd, I'd kind of just leave it down kind of 10, 15, something like that. Because you can see there, even with 15, it's got enough of a blur in that straight away your eyes drawn to that garage sign at the back and the rest of the car's kind of thrown out. So that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully that is of some help to somebody out there. Like I said, these effects aren't going to completely replace doing it in camera. You can just use these techniques to add a little bit more punch and drama into your photos. But what do you guys reckon? Do you like these techniques? Are you going to start using them? Do you already start using them? Or do you think that Photoshop's cheating and you just want to do it completely in camera? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.